Welcome to the Poll Worker Online Procedure Training. In this video, you will learn how to prepare the polling place for voting, set up the voting equipment, sign in and process voters, canvas and report results, and close the polling place. To be a poll worker, you must be a registered voter and a resident of Westchester County. You may not hold public elective office, be a candidate running for office, or any relative of the candidate running in the district you are assigned to work. You must be able to clearly speak, read, and write the English language. New York State election law mandates that all poll workers attend training classes every year. This is to ensure that all inspectors are kept up to date and well versed on election law and all procedures. An exam is given at the end of this training, which every inspector must pass in order to become certified. Each certified inspector takes an oath of office given by the Board of Elections. An oath card will be issued upon your completion of this course. The Westchester County Board of Elections appoints all poll workers in accordance with the New York State election law. While inspectors are required to become certified every year, doing so does not automatically guarantee an assignment to work. The certification process provides the board with a pool of workers. However, there may be instances when more people than needed are certified in certain locations, thereby resulting in some inspectors not receiving assignments. Any inspector assigned to work will receive both a telephone call from the Board of Elections to confirm their availability to work and a formal assignment letter directing him or her to appear at a specific polling place and election district. All individuals working at the polls are paid for attending required training sessions and for working on Election Day. The rate of pay is set by the county legislature. You will be paid for every required training course you attend. If you are chosen to be a chairperson in your district, you will be paid an additional amount to reflect your additional duties. The chairperson must perform all of the duties of the chairperson, including calling in the results and returning the supply bag on election night in order to be entitled to the chairperson stipend. Inspectors appearing at the polls without a formal assignment from the Board of Elections will not be compensated. Your most fundamental obligation as a poll worker, also known as election inspector, is to administer the election impartially. Under the New York State election law and the Federal Voting Rights Act, it is illegal to conduct the election in any way that benefits or favors one or more candidates over others, or to discriminate against candidates or voters on the basis of age, race, color, gender, language, or country of origin. Listed here are examples of prohibited practices. Your main responsibilities as election inspectors are to maintain order in the polling place, ensure all eligible voters exercise their constitutional right to vote, make sure all votes are counted, Ensure the law is correctly and uniformly applied. As a poll worker, we expect you to dress appropriately, business casual, arrive on time and work throughout the day, show mutual respect to each other, respect voters' rights, know and follow Board of Elections policies and procedures, and of course, have a positive attitude. Eating or drinking at the sign-in table or when dealing with voters is prohibited. While in the polling place, cell phones should only be used to contact the BOE. Texting, personal phone calls, radio playing, wearing headphones, or using a laptop is prohibited. Unless they are service animals, pets are not allowed in the poll site. You, the inspectors, work for the Board of Elections. Four inspectors are assigned to each election district, two representing the Democratic Party, and two representing the Republican Party. These are the two major political parties. Because inspectors must function in a bipartisan manner, election inspector duties should be divided equally. For example, two inspectors from different political parties are required to handle the e-poll book, which will be used to sign in voters, and to compare election day signatures made by voters to the pre-printed signatures appearing in the poll book. Duties can change during voting hours, so inspectors should alternate or rotate tasks. Inspectors must maintain order in the polling place at all times. If voters do not comply with your attempts to maintain order, you may call the police or sheriff's office. 
These officials are required by law to help you. All inspectors must wear their proper identification badges found in the green supply bag. If not previously assigned by the Board of Elections, the four inspectors are to choose a chairperson among you. The chairperson will receive an additional stipend to perform certain duties. While the chairperson has specific responsibilities, they should not be left to do the majority of the work. All election inspectors in your election district should be involved in all activities. The responsibilities of the chairperson are as follows. Announce election night voting results. Phone in the results after the polls have been closed. Account for election district supplies. Coordinate meal times and short breaks. Return all supplies from the supply bag to the designated location. Ensure all forms are filled out completely and accurately. Now two inspectors, one representing each of the major political parties, will be assigned to the BMD, also known as the ballot marking device. The BMD machine is designed for voters with disabilities. This voting machine will also serve as an emergency machine if the image cast machine for your election district breaks down. In districts and polling places with high Hispanic populations, the U.S. Justice Department has decreed that bilingual inspectors be assigned to serve as interpreters on Election Day when oral assistance is required. They will help translate any information or questions poll workers have for the voter and translate the answers, if needed. Poll watchers are appointed and sent by a party chair or secretary to observe the proceedings of the election. Their purpose is to be the eyes and ears of the governing body that sent them. They are to be seen and not heard. Here are examples of what they can and cannot do. Poll watchers may be present up to 15 minutes before the polls open. View the opening of the voting machines. Make a request via email to the Board of Elections for a list of voters who have voted. Challenge a person they believe isn't eligible to vote. View the closing of the voting machines. Observe the closing and be present when the final votes are read out loud. Poll watchers may not disrupt the election process in any way. Tell an election inspector what to do or how to do their job. Sit at the table with the inspectors. Touch any of the supplies or equipment. Talk to voters about their choice in candidates. Or electioneer within the 100-foot marker. All poll watchers must have a written certificate issued by their chairperson, secretary of the political party, or independent body which they represent. The certificate must be the original copy, signed and handed to the inspectors of the election district in which the poll watcher wishes to watch. They must have a separate certificate for each election district. The certificate must be returned to the Board of Elections with your supplies. Wearing or displaying any political or campaign material or clothing within a hundred feet of a polling place is considered electioneering and is prohibited. Use the tape measure to make sure the hundred foot marker is 100 feet from the entrance of the polling place and check periodically that signs are being obeyed and they are still posted in their proper place. Federal observers are sent from the Department of Justice to monitor compliance with the Federal Voting Rights Act, Help America Vote Act, and a consent degree. They may be present at the polls from the time you arrive until the time you leave. They must show you credentials of who they are. Simply write down their name, the agency who sent them, and their badge number. They may come and go as they please and sit in a separate seating area, away from the sign-in table, so they can monitor how polls are being run. Arrive at your poll site one hour before the polls open. In other words, at 5 a.m. You will need this time to have everything set up and the voting machines up and running in time to serve voters when the polls open at 6. It is essential that everyone is on time. Neither the machine nor the supply bag can be opened unless an inspector representing both parties is present. Bring your assignment letter with you to the polls. Your direct contact with the Board of Elections, the person who assigned you to work, is on that letter. Call us if the poll site is locked upon your arrival, you cannot locate your supply bag or the voting machines, or if inspectors are missing from your election district. To open the polls, an election district must have at least one inspector present 
from each of the two major political parties, one Democrat and one Republican. If when you arrive, you have only two election inspectors in your district and they are both registered in the same political party, one inspector can be sworn in to represent the opposite party until a substitute arrives. You must swear in the replacement worker and complete the provision to fill a vacancy. Here's what it looks like. You will find this emergency provision in your binder. Every polling place is different. This is just an example, so you have a general idea of how the polling place should look and how the flow of voters should be. Two inspectors, one Democrat and one Republican inspector, should be sitting at the sign-in table. One inspector should be stationed around the area where the privacy booth is set up, and one inspector should be stationed near the voting machine. Inspectors should absolutely rotate positions throughout the day. Every election district will have their own image cast voting machine. There will also be one BMD voting machine in each polling place. So, for example, if there are three election districts in a polling place, there will be a total of four voting machines, one for each district and one BMD machine. Remember, the BMD machine will also serve as an emergency machine if a district's machine breaks down. This BMD machine is capable of reading all ballots within that polling place. Confirm there is a poll pad case, a supply bag, and an image cast voting machine labeled for your election district and that they were all sealed upon your arrival. Make sure you have received the correct supplies for your district. If anything is labeled for another polling place, contact the Board of Elections immediately. We recommend that the four election inspectors break up into two teams, each team having one Democrat and one Republican inspector. Teams will work together recording seals, verifying all paper supplies are accounted for, posting all signs, and starting up the voting equipment. Every election district will be supplied with their own poll pad case. Within that case will be two poll pads, however, only set one of them up. The other stays in the case and is used only if the first one malfunctions. Inside your supply bag, you will find ballot booklets and affidavit ballots. In the outside pocket of the supply bag, you'll see a tag for your sample ballots. Compare all ballots to make sure they are the same and belong to your election district. The side pocket of the supply bag of the lowest election district will have the supplies for the BMD machine, along with all signage in English and Spanish. It is the responsibility of the inspectors assigned to the BMD machine to post all signs before the polls open. Every supply bag will have a binder containing, among other things, important Board of Elections phone numbers such as the results call-in number, as well as inspector procedure and voting machine manuals. If someone informs you that their family member is deceased, notice of deceased forms are inside this binder. Only a relative of the deceased person may fill out and sign this form. When the form is completed, the relative of the deceased voter may take it home and either mail or bring the form back to the Board of Elections. They may also complete it in the polling place and give it back to you. If so, this form should come back to us in the orange security bag. You will notice the image cast machine was delivered pre-sealed. Check the seals to be sure that they are intact. If any of the seals are broken or have been removed, contact the Board of Elections immediately. Record all seal numbers on the Canvas Report seal recording sheet. Only remove seal 2, which is sealing the scanner cover. All districts will find in their supply bag a large Canvas sheet titled Return of Canvas Ballot Transmittal Seal Recording Sheet. When checking your supplies and recording the seal numbers off of the machines and security bags, you must use this form. Complete this entire section when opening the polls. Mark the boxes to show whether the following seals were found to be properly secured when you arrive at the poll site and record the numbers found on the seals. Complete the entire section labeled at the opening of polls. The orange security bag is for affidavit ballots in sealed affidavit envelopes, court orders, abandoned ballots left on the machine, canvas report, seal recording sheet, opening and closing tape receipt envelopes. The purple security bag is for all spoiled and voided ballots, 
abandoned ballots left anywhere in the polling place and nowhere near the voting machine. The green security bag has the machine security key, machine and bag seals, envelopes for opening and closing receipt tape. The seals pictured here should be broken in the morning and replaced at the close of polls. Breaking the seal at the top of the orange and purple bag exposes the opening at the top of the bag. These bags are designed so items can go in, but they don't come out. The seals at the bottom of these bags should not be broken. Do not break the seals on the zipper of these two bags. They stay on for the entire day and are never removed. Unravel the power cord and plug it into a power source. The voting machine will automatically power up and begin loading election firmware. It will then prompt you with a series of beeps to insert the security key. This key will be found in your green security bag. On the administrative menu, confirm the number of ballots cast at the bottom of the screen is zero. If the results are not zero, contact the Board of Elections immediately. Next, select Open Poll. On this screen, you will be prompted to make a selection. Print a zero tape. At this point, the scanner will generate a long receipt tape. Verify all information regarding polling place and election district are correct. Also, verify candidate names on the tape match what is printed on the ballots in the ballot book, affidavit ballots, and sample ballots. If anything is incorrect, contact the Board of Elections immediately. You will get several ballot books in your blue supply bag that will be in number order. Each ballot book will be numbered at the top near the binding. Please use the books in sequential order, keeping only one English booklet and one Spanish booklet on the table at a time. Verify that the voting machine security key, also known as the I button, is delivered in the small green security bag. Mark the box to show whether the seals were found to be properly secured when you arrived at the poll site and then record the numbers found on the seals. Replacement seals for closing the polls will be found in this green bag. Verify the total number of ballots and booklets in your election district and that ballot book number one starts with ballot number one. Use ballot books in sequential order, starting with ballot numbers one through 50 first. Then record the information about the ballot books below. Keep only one English and one Spanish ballot book on the sign-in table at a time. Everything else should be kept in an orderly fashion in your supply bag. Verify you have received affidavit ballots and affidavit envelopes for your election district and record the quantity of English and Spanish affidavit ballots received. As mentioned earlier, check to make sure the affidavit ballots match the ballot books and sample ballots. If they do not, call the Board of Elections immediately. All inspectors should sign off on this section of the form, certifying that all was sealed and all items were reviewed for accuracy. Serving the voter. Two inspectors, one from each political party, verify each voter's registration using the poll pad, also known as the e-poll book. Make sure to review your poll pad manual and the poll pad videos on this website for setting up your poll pad. If the voter hands you their voter notification card, choose scan barcode or ask the voter their name and choose manual entry. Using the stylus pen provided, enter the first three letters of the voter's last name where prompted. Then enter the first three letters of the voter's first name. Then tap search. Carefully review the list of possible voters on the screen. Ask the voter for their address and select the correct voter by tapping on their line. Verify the voter's information is correct. If correct, press accept. Rotate the poll pad and allow the voter to sign. Then press done signing. One Democrat and one Republican should verify the voter's signature resembles the pre-printed signature in the poll pad. Both inspectors enter their initials in the appropriate box and press submit. 
the voter was processed successfully. In New York State, registered voters by law are not required to show ID to vote, so do not ask for it. There are exceptions to this rule, and we will discuss them later. Once the voter has been processed in the poll pad, carefully fold the next ballot at the perforated line before tearing away from the stub booklet. This will make it easier to tear off and reduce the chance of damaging the ballot. If a ballot is damaged, the scanner may not accept the ballot or worse yet, could cause a paper jam. Hand the voter their ballot, informing them if the ballot is two-sided. Offer them a privacy sleeve and ballot marking pen, and then direct them to a privacy booth to mark their ballot. Make sure there is always an available privacy booth before handing a voter their ballot. You don't want to have voters holding their ballot without a booth to go to. Hold up the line until a booth becomes available. When the voter is done, you can signal them to walk over to the machine to cast their ballot. Make sure the screen on the scanner says System Ready. Instruct the voter to gently feed the ballot into the scanner. It works like an ATM and will pull the ballot into the feeder. The scanner will accept the ballot any which way, face up or face down. When the ballot has been fed into the scanner, this sequence of messages will appear on the screen. Again, make sure the screen says System Ready before signaling the next voter over. The voter's right to privacy must be preserved. Do not handle the voter's completed ballot. Do not watch them insert their ballot into the machine. Do not press any buttons on the scanner for the voter unless they've asked you to do so. You must account for every ballot given out, used or unused. Do not let any ballots out of your sight at any time. No one should ever leave the polling place with their ballot. Again, if all privacy booths are occupied, Take a pause at signing voters in to maintain order in the polling place. If a voter appears at the sign-in table who either isn't appearing in the poll pad or is unsure of his election district, there is an election district finder function on the home screen of the poll pad. Not only does your poll pad have this functionality, a BMD inspector or bilingual coordinator within your polling place will have a poll pad programmed for lookup only. You may direct the voter to this inspector working the lookup only poll pad to determine the voter's correct election district or polling place. Search by entering the voter's house number, then street name, and press search. What appears then is a polling place name and address where they are supposed to vote. Even driving directions are provided which can be sent via text message to the voter's mobile phone. If a voter does not appear in the poll pad, they may vote by affidavit ballot. After doing an advanced search and determining that they do in fact live in this election district, proceed to give the voter an affidavit ballot and an affidavit envelope. Instruct the voter to go to the privacy booth. Fill out either the English or Spanish portion of the envelope. Vote their ballot, sign and seal their ballot in the envelope, and return back to the sign-in table when they are done. If the affidavit is returned to the board without a signature and or not sealed, it will not count. On the poll pad screen, tap Add Affidavit. This is a new procedure and should be done before placing any affidavits in the orange security bag. All affidavit ballots collected must be logged into the poll pad. With the voter's completed affidavit envelope in front of you, carefully enter the required information listed on screens one and two, as well as the subsequent screens to process this voter's affidavit envelope. Lastly, place the signed and sealed envelope in the orange security bag. The term inactive status is defined in the election law as a category of registered voters who have failed to keep their address up to date with the Board of Elections. Choose Issue Affidavit and proceed to give the voter an affidavit ballot and an affidavit envelope. Any person who feels they are eligible to vote on the voting machine 
may obtain a court order by personally appearing before a county or Supreme Court judge. If the voter has a court order, select Court Order Received. If the voter obtains a court order and presents it at the sign-in table, read the court order thoroughly and follow its order. The court order will either say Issue Ballot or Issue Affidavit. If the court order says Issue Ballot, take the court order, place it in the orange security bag, and go through the prompts to allow the voter to vote on the machine. If the court order says Issue Affidavit, follow procedure as outlined earlier. When the voter comes back to you with their completed affidavit and envelope, use a paper clip to attach the court order to the affidavit envelope and place it in the orange security bag. In this section, we will discuss overvote and double vote. In this example, for best ice cream flavor, the contest states, vote for one. However, the voter made one too many selections. A message will appear on the screen informing the voter they have filled in too many ovals and the votes in that contest will not count. Allow the voter to read the message. The voter should press either cast or return. Do not press any button for the voter. If the voter wishes, they should press return. At this point, the voter's ballot will come back out. They should return to the sign-in table to void this ballot and request a new one. If they wish to ignore this message, and cast their ballot with the votes that will not count, the voter should press cast. In this example, too many ovals were filled out for the same candidate. If the voter decides to cast this ballot, the vote will count for John Smith under party A, which is the party listed first on the ballot, not under party C. A message will appear on the screen informing the voter they filled in more than one oval for the same candidate. Allow the voter to read the message. If the voter wishes, they should press return. The voter's ballot will come back out. They can then review their ballot and choose to go back to the sign-in table and request a new one, or they may cast their ballot as is. Do not press any button for the voter. When a voter makes a mistake on their ballot, direct them back to the sign-in table. The voter should write void on their ballot and drop it into the opening at the top of the purple security bag. The voter must surrender their spoiled ballot before the process of issuing a new one can begin. On the poll pad, look up the voter's record. Once located, you will notice the record is shaded green and is marked as voted. Press on the record and read the prompt in its entirety. To spoil ballot, press spoil ballot and enter password 1234. Banner will read spoil ballot. Choose the ballot to spoil, then choose the reason, example, voter error. Press spoil ballot to complete the process and give the voter another ballot from the booklet. Please note, spoiled ballots remaining will decrease for each ballot that is spoiled. A voter may be issued two replacement ballots for a maximum of three ballots. If a voter requests a third replacement or fourth ballot, call the Board of Elections immediately. The term abandoned ballots refers to ballots left by a voter at the privacy booth, voting machine, or anywhere in the polling place which were not cast. If a ballot is abandoned at the machine, then two inspectors, one representing each party, should cast the ballot without examining it. If the ballot is abandoned anywhere else, then two inspectors, one representing each party, will mark the ballot void without examining it and place it in the purple security bag for spoiled ballots. If a ballot is found at the machine, but the scanner will not accept the ballot, then this ballot is placed in the orange security bag. If your election district's voting machine has malfunctioned, call the Board of Elections immediately. We will have a machine technician dispatched to your polling place to address the issue as soon as possible. Continue signing voters in and direct them to the BMD machine to cast their ballot. The BMD is programmed to accept any and all ballots within your polling place and the votes will be counted in the exact same way. 
On the rare occasion that both your election district's image cast machine and the BMD machine have broken down, still continue signing voters in and have them insert their voted ballot into the orange security bag. Affidavit ballots are never to be used when the machine breaks down. Throughout the day, keep a stick count in the tally section of the return of Canvas for all items collected and placed in the orange and purple security bags. Some voters who registered by mail and did not provide ID prior to appearing at the poll site will be required by law to show ID on election day. You will notice the voter's record is shaded blue and is marked ID required. Inform the voter of the message appearing on the e-poll book screen. Then press on the voter's record and read the prompt in its entirety. If the voter provides a valid ID, select that option and go through the prompts to check them in. If an acceptable ID is not provided, offer the voter an affidavit ballot and envelope. Due to a recent change in New York State law, voters are no longer permitted to cast a ballot on the voting machine if they have already been issued an absentee ballot for that election. If a voter arrives at the polling place to vote on the machine and the poll pad indicates that this voter was issued an absentee ballot, the voter can still vote in person using an affidavit ballot. Proceed to read out loud the absentee ballot mailed issued statement on the poll pad screen. Some voters who requested an absentee ballot may decide to come out to vote anyway on election day, or because of a delay in the mail service, they never received their absentee ballot in the mail. These voters must still vote by affidavit ballot. They are not allowed to cast a ballot into the voting machine. Inform the voter of the message on the poll pad screen and hand them the notice to voters regarding affidavit ballots. Let's say this another way. If the poll pad screen states the voter in front of you was issued an absentee ballot, they can either hand in their absentee ballot to you and have that count or void their absentee ballot and vote at the poll site by affidavit. They cannot vote on the voting machine. If someone wishes to drop off an absentee ballot for themselves or another person, make sure the absentee ballot envelope is signed and sealed and feed it into the orange security bag. Any voter may request assistance. If a voter makes this request, have the voter swear or affirm that he or she needs assistance. I, state your name, do solemnly swear or affirm that I am in need of assistance while voting. Any person other than an inspector who assists an individual in voting must take the voter assistance oath before rendering assistance. Make sure that the person providing assistance isn't the voter's employer or union agent. Then follow the prompts on the poll pad for assistance required. If the voter has no one with them to assist, one inspector from each political party may provide assistance. You may do nothing to influence their vote or observe how the person voted. If you happen to notice how the person voted, you can tell no one. If a voter requires assistance, check the assistance required box found on the poll pad worker confirmation page. Enter the name and address of the person assisting. Instruct him or her to read the assistance required oath and sign on the signature line. You may now complete the voter check-in process. If for any reason the voter is physically unable to sign, one of the two inspectors should write unable to sign on the voter's signature line and the reason next to it. Proceed through the prompts to issue the voter a ballot. If a voter requests to vote on the ballot marking device or BMD voting machine, have the voter sign on the signature line on the poll pad when prompted, hand them a ballot, and direct him or her to the inspectors at the BMD machine. Every election district must complete a challenge report found in your supply bag. Following are examples of each section. If a voter has changed his or her name since they registered or last voted, they can still vote without re-registering as long as they still reside at the same address in your district. Have the voter sign his or her name as it appears in your e-poll book and just above it, sign their new name. Continue through the prompts to process this voter and issue them a ballot. Note this name change in section one of the challenge report. If the voter's name is in your e-poll book, 
but at a different address, still within your election district, that person may vote on the voting machine. List the voter's ID, their old address, then their new address in section one of the challenge report. List the voter's ID, their name and address, and the reason for the challenge in section two of the challenge report. Let's speak on actual challenges. A voter's qualifications can be challenged at the polling site by an inspector, poll watcher, or any registered voter who is properly voting at that polling site. Challenges can be made for several reasons, such as the person's signature does not match the current registration signature. Someone else using the same name has already voted. The person is believed not to reside at his or her registered address. As an inspector, you must challenge any voter whom you know or suspect is not legally entitled to vote in your district. The challenge must be made before the person votes. Add the challenged voter's name in section two of the challenge report. Give the challenged voter the notice to voters form located in the clear binder in your supply bag explaining his or her legal options. Administer the preliminary oath to the voter. If the applicant takes the preliminary oath, the inspector should proceed to ask the applicant such questions as may pertain to the reason his or her right to vote was challenged. If any applicant refuses to answer fully any questions asked of them, he or she shall not be permitted to vote on the machine. If all of the inspectors of your district by majority vote are satisfied with the votes answers to these questions, the challenge is withdrawn and the individual is allowed to vote on the machine in the normal manner. In the event of a tie, the individual is allowed to vote. If the inspectors of your election district have voted against the applicant, yet the applicant persists in their claim to vote, you must then administer the qualification oath to be sure that the individual understands the voting requirements and that if they make a false statement, they will be guilty of perjury. If the voter takes this oath, the challenged voter is then allowed to vote. If the applicant is challenged for one of the causes stated here, which would exclude him or her from the right to vote, such inspectors shall administer the corresponding oath. If the applicant takes the oath, the challenged voter is then allowed to vote. If there is a poll record for this person, the voter can use the machine to cast their vote. On the voter confirmation screen, check the box labeled Challenge Voter. Select the reason for the challenge from the drop down menu and have two inspectors, one from each party, initial the challenge report signature line. If there is no poll record for the person, issue him or her an affidavit ballot. If a voter requires assistance, complete section three providing the voter's information and reason for assistance, as well as the name of the person providing the assistance. Any affidavits or court orders should be noted in section four of the challenge report. In case of an emergency that interrupts voting at the polling site, the chairperson must call the Westchester County Board of Elections to notify them of the emergency situation as soon as it is safe to do so. After conferring with the Board of Elections, building personnel, and if necessary, emergency services personnel, assess the situation and determine if it is possible to move the voting system, signage, supplies, etc. to another room on the premises or to a nearby site to permit voting to continue. If you can safely relocate the voting equipment and materials to another suitable room, then do so. If you cannot, consider whether you can move paper ballots, poll pads, signage, supplies, etc. to the safe room or site so that the voting can continue on an emergency basis. If the poll site must be vacated, poll workers, working in conjunction with emergency personnel, must make certain that everyone gets out safely. If the site must be vacated, but there is no imminent danger to personal safety, poll workers should attempt to protect the integrity of the voting process and voting materials as much as possible by doing the following. Record the votes cast number from the voting system. Gather and secure the following. E-poll books, all voter affidavit ballots, all ballot books, opening and closing reports, and payment vouchers. 
Then place them in the orange security bag. Place a security key on the scanner and from the administrative menu, touch Close Polls. After the closing tape is generated, select Power Down. Seal the voting machine and record all seal numbers. If the site can safely be reopened, notify the Westchester County Board of Elections and a team of technicians will be dispatched to determine if the voting system has been damaged or if any tampering has occurred. They will also replenish supplies and advise poll workers of any special instructions that might be necessary due to the interruption. Polls close exactly at 9 p.m. The chairperson announces out loud that the polls are closed. Any voter on line by 9 p.m., no matter where the line ends, is allowed to vote. So let's say this another way for emphasis. What if the line runs outside the polling place? Even if the line runs outside the polling place, down the street, around the corner, any voter on line at 9 p.m., no matter where the line ends, is allowed to vote. An inspector should stand at the end of the line of voters so that no one else can get online. Only after the last person has voted can closing procedures begin. All voting machines in the polling place must remain on and open until the last person has checked in. Only election inspectors, poll watchers, and federal observers are permitted in the poll site after the last person has voted. All closing activities must be done in bipartisan teams. Return the polling place to its original condition. No food, drink, or garbage should be left behind. All inspectors leave together. After the last voter in the polling place has voted, retrieve the security key from the green security bag. Press close poll. The results tape will print. Press power down. Unplug the machine. All election inspectors must sign closing tape. One memory card from every election district's voting machine has to be removed and will be collected by an inspector working at your polling place. This inspector will need to deliver these memory cards to the Board of Elections in a timely manner. Push in the long, slim button to the right of the memory card. This will eject, release the card from the machine. Once the card has been removed, Insert the card into the silver security bag and place a seal on the bag. Record the seal number on the seal recording sheet. Hand the silver security bag to the individual responsible for collecting all of the memory cards in your polling place. Lower the scanner cover and secure with new seal. Record all new and existing seals on the seal recording sheet. The first two numbers, 24, represent the town slash city code. The second two numbers, 00, represent the ward number, which is used only in Yonkers. The third two numbers, 27, represent the election district number. The last number, 1 or 2, identifies whether the ballot cast was an English or Spanish ballot. 1 equals English and 2 equals Spanish. While the chairperson announces the results out loud, their counterpart uses a sample ballot to write down those results. The chairperson must call in results to the call-in number provided on the return of the canvas sheet, which can also be found in your binder. New seals are provided in the small green security bag. These seals are to be placed on the voting machine and security bags at the close of polls. Record these seal numbers for the ballot box door using the red peel and stick seal, for the scanner cover slash privacy seal, using the white plastic seal, and for the compact flash door seals. Upon completing the entire canvas report at the end of the night, be sure that each inspector has signed it. Remember, the chairperson must call in the results. Each supply bag must be returned to the location designated by the Board of Elections. The only items that remain at the poll site are the sealed voting machines, sealed poll pads, and privacy booths. Get home safe and thank you for your service.
You have reached the end of the poll worker procedure training video. After testifying that you have seen this video, you will be brought to the poll worker exam. Good luck.